Welcome back to Boring Bill Friday. Today, I've reached an all-time low in boringness. It's a 2009 Ford Focus. Let's take a look at it, see why I decided this would be my boring bill. Now, I don't care if you're a Ford fan or not, but you must admit, it does not get more boring than grandma's baby blue Ford Focus. So, why fix it? Well, once upon a time, we used to rebuild cars to either save some money, or in my case, make some money. Now, apparently, we just do it to make videos. So, I'm gonna make a video, and hopefully some money. So this literally was Grandma's Ford Focus. She used it to go to church on Sunday, bingo on Friday, and rear-end SUVs on Tuesday. So, now it's mine. I chose this because it has low miles, it's well-maintained, and it has a clear title. Now, it is a total loss, but it kept a clear title because they did what they call retaining the salvage, which you basically pay the insurance company what they would have got at the auction for it. I bought it from her for that price. So, the title is still the original title for this car. One owner, bought with 11 miles, brand new. It made sense to fix it. I can make a few bucks on it. It's not a bad little car. Make someone a good commuter car, maybe a good college kid car. This could be my daily. So, we're gonna need a fender, a hood, front bumper, headlight, that one's cracked but still usable, a grill, radiator support, cooling system, and maybe a couple little odds and ends. So I priced out all the parts. It was about 700 bucks for everything it needs. Yeah, also needs a windshield too. So it was about 700 bucks for all this stuff. So I decided to try and look around and see if I could buy a parts car. Parts cars were a little expensive. I only wanted to spend at most 700 bucks or I might as well just go buy the parts themselves. I bid on a few and I finally got one. Let's take a look at it. So here's our gem. It's a 2008 Ford Focus Coupe. Now, even though it's a two-door, it still has all the same parts that we need for our car. The hood, the fenders, all that stuff in the front end. It's got a clear title and a ton of miles. It was a no start at the auction. I'm guessing it probably needs an engine, usually because the timing chain goes out and bends all the valves. I won't know until I try to start it, but it was dead when I picked it up. Now, I normally charge them on the way home from the auction, but since it was negative seven degrees, that's in freedom units, the Celsius equivalent is uh, really darn cold. So I wasn't gonna mess with it. I decided just to back it in the shop and worry about it in the morning. So, now it's the morning, we'll worry about it. Let's see if we can get started. So we'll throw a jumper pack on there. We got some power. Got a couple keys. Pat's lock light. No light. No start. Push button start. Correction. Push button, no start. Definitely sounds like a bad timing chain. Definitely has no compression. We only need an audible compression test on this one. Mmm, yummy. Yes, it smells as bad as it looks. So with the dream of cruising around town and my new Ford Focus shattered, it's time to take it apart. So we'll pull the washer hoses off. Now we can unbolt the hood hinges. We're gonna leave them on the hood and just unbolt them from the rails. And pull our push pins out of our grill. There's a bunch of clips across the bottom of the grill. Pry it out a little bit and then disengage each one. Pop it off. Now you pull the bumper off. A couple screws in there. That just clips into the fender. A little plastic bracket. Just wiggle and pull. A couple of clips on the top. There's supposed to be a closeout panel on the bottom, but this one was long gone. 
so we don't have to worry about disconnecting all those. Now I'll pull the fender liner off the bumper on the driver's side. Pull the one screw out. Pull the bumper off the fender. Hey, Mr. Spotty. So why do I pick on Ford so much? Well, in addition to riling up the Ford fans, they do dumb things like rivet on the energy absorber. Really? Plastic rivets wouldn't do? I'll we'll go back to taking it apart. Pull the bolts out of the headlight. Clips into the bracket, just lift it up. Now we can disconnect all of our sockets. Now to the driver's side. So brittle. I think I broke every single one of the plastic tabs. So we have our underhood measurements, but we got a car here. We're gonna take some more. Extra measurements never hurt. So I measured all the underhood measurements, make sure everything was in the right place, and now I'll take some more. This helps in case we put it all together and our measurements that they give us are off. With more measurements, you can find out exactly where it's off and how to move it to make it right. And it's something that you gotta do before you take it apart because once you start moving stuff around, it's kind of a pain. Never hurts to do a little extra work and save you some time in the long run. You just measure different points, make sure they're the same on each side, and write them down. Now that the paperwork's done, we can start taking the rest of it apart. Pull the fender off. Unbolt the bracket in the front. I'll pull the wheel liner out. Had about three clips in it. One bolt on the bottom of the fender. And the bolt inside the wheel well. One bolt inside the door. And a couple across the top. Now our fender's ready to come off. We'll unbolt the hood latch. And all the bolts across the front of our radiator support. And the top. We'll unbolt the overflow bottle. Lift the overflow bottle out of the way. So we can get to some more bolts. Now we can pull the wiring harness off the top and across the front. Wiggle the radiator support out of there. And that wiring harness is still in our way, so we're going to pull a little more of it off. Give ourselves a little room. And now we can weasel that radiator support out of there. Now we can discharge the AC system. That was quick. It was actually full. I was surprised. Pull the clips out for the trans cooler, which is actually in the condenser. And we'll disconnect the lines. Pull the upper radiator hose off. This one's nice. It's got the European style clips. Now we can unbolt the bottom of the condenser. It's kind of rusted in there. So we're gonna have to take our time so we don't break things. 
We'll use our makeshift hammer. Everything's a hammer if you're brave enough. Knock out some of the corrosion that's in there. Loosen it up a little bit. Just kind of wiggle it out. Pry it out a little bit. You see the dust falling out of it. That's all the corrosion. Get that line out of the way. Now we can pull the lower radiator hose off. Lift the cooling assembly up a little bit so we can get to that line on the side. Use our hammer again to break this one loose. Take our time, pry it off, and we saved our condenser. Not that it's horribly expensive, but when you're building cheap cars, you need to save every penny you can. Now we're going to take off Ford's rivets. I win. I'll pull the washer bottle off. We're going to need it for ours. Now we need to take off the power steering reservoir. Ours is broken. It's just one hose, two bolts, and then it pulls off. Don't worry, there's a drain pan underneath it. And now win for the clean freaks. I'm gonna clean off the reservoir before I put it back on. Even I can't put something that dirty back on. So now we're going to cut the reinforcement off. It's easier to cut it off with the end of the frame rails and then drill the little pieces off later. Look at that, a win for the safety experts. Safety glasses and hearing protection. Still no gloves. Baby steps, guys. Cut off the ends of our frame rails. Now we'll just remove those little pieces from our reinforcement and it'll be ready to go back on. And here's our parts we used off our donor car. All right, so that's probably about all the boring you guys can handle for one day. So we're gonna wrap it up here. So join me next time on the All Ford channel. And if you're wondering what's with all the Fords, it just kind of works out that way. I didn't go out looking for them. The good deals just happen to come along. So we're doing Fords for a while. I've gone through phases all throughout my rebuilding career. Do GMs for a while, Fords, Dodges, Hondas, Toyotas, Kias, whatever. The deals just always seem to come in groups by one manufacturer. Can't explain it, but that's the way it works. So like the video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see more Fords. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.